Hi, DME120. I want to take just a minute and look at module four, the storyboard that's created in there for you guys. So um, this may trip some of you guys up because you almost have to think backwards. So in module four, you're going to create a storyboard and storyboards are really important for all projects that you guys will do. And am I super picky about how you create your storyboard? No. Nope. Nope, <laughs> not really. Um, I just want you to create one. So um, let's check this out. If you click this link here, it'll give you a really great idea of what a storyboard is. And this storyboard that they talk about in here is going to parallel with a movie, um, mostly. So, or movies and most of the examples. And it's used a lot with video production. However, storyboards are used for animation, for straight up projects, they're used for a lot more than just videos. So I want you guys to think about how you would create some interactivity within your Black History Month project. Remember, this is going to fourth graders. Um, when, when I said that it's going to fourth graders, it really does. I take all of your guys' projects for Black History Month and put them together in a library and ship them off to the elementary school down the street, and they pick the ones that they would like to use. So these really are getting used by someone. So if you think I'm just like making up these projects, it really is going based off of the need of what a local school wants and what they can use. So here we go. So I just wanna take a look at this. Um, you can watch this video to understand the basics of what a storyboard is and it's going to tell you it doesn't have to be beautiful and you don't have to be an artist and that is in fact true um, this assignment will also be interpreted differently by each student in each project so this really should be an easy assignment that's why I wanted to make this video because I don't want you to overthink it um, I do have some quick videos here about adding some animation to PowerPoint and adding action buttons so let's say that you wanted to have your project be an interactive PowerPoint because you're already using PowerPoint. Cool, um, that may be exactly what you wanna do. And if that's the case, then I think that sounds like an awesome option. So um, there are some examples here. This is an example from a previous class of what a student created for their storyboard. And I'm gonna tell you they did theirs backwards because these are the exact items that were used. So maybe that is what you guys wanna do. Maybe you want to look at module five and see what's coming up in module five because in module five you do add the interactivity. So in module five, um, you add your interactivity and post it in here. However, your interactivity has got to be able to be used by anybody with no special software and no special additions and no special anything. You should just be able to use it. So if you want to use an online website or some kind of online option, you've got to make sure like Quizlet, it has restrictions. Um, you've got to have codes and stuff for it. So some of the cahoots you've got to have codes for. So none of these options that you guys are using can have a code or an extra access code. Nobody can be blocked out. So this is why PowerPoint is an excellent option. Um, if you guys want to take a look here, there are some examples for you. Like here's the Harry Potter quiz template. And um, I'll just open this one really fast so that you guys can get an idea. So this person here, it won't be really fast because it has to download. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is the Harry Potter example. I've downloaded it. I'm gonna say enable editing and I'm gonna take a look here at what they did. All right, so it says welcome to Hogwarts, right? So I'm gonna hit play on this. Welcome to Hogwarts. Press the space key to begin your quiz. Did you hear that audio? Oh. All right. So they've got a character that's flying in. They had some audio that started it off. Welcome to Hogwarts. And so what this student did not actually end up doing was using a, they used a specialized font. So when you use a specialized font and then you ship something off, it will change the font to a default font or to another font um, when it gets shipped off. So use basic default fonts and stuff like that. So anyways, they've got these owls here and you click on the owl for question one and you just make it a template. So you guys are, um, creating your own questions that go along with your thing. So up here where it says question one, you guys are gonna actually, oops, bloop, bloop, bloop. Where it says question one, you guys will put your own question in there that goes along with your project. Um, because if you look at the set of directions, it tells you that you've got to have 
what does it tell you? It says that in, uh, hold on, we're going to take a look. Module four, I think it says you need eight questions. It's going to tell you how many you need. So take a look at this and read it. It is going to tell you how many questions you need. Here it is. The audience interaction will require a minimum of eight questions that query the content of your project. So you need eight questions that's going to go along with the project you created. All right. So let me go back to this PowerPoint. So on this interactivity, instead of it saying question one, it would say your first question. And then you have these buttons that say that it's incorrect or that it's correct. So there's only one correct answer. So if you get this question correct, you've got it and you can click to go back and you can answer the next question and it'll tell you which question that is and if you get it wrong it should this one is a little off this one's running a little bit off so maybe the student didn't marry up all of their buttons properly so um, anyway but that is an example so you can check those out in module five I'm going to give you guys some helpers on how to do this in PowerPoint, if that's what you'd like to do. So let me get started on that video. But in the meantime, you guys need to create a storyboard. And if that means that you go to Google and you search for storyboard templates, it will bring you to a bunch of storyboard templates that you can use. Create storyboard templates, free storyboard creator, customizable templates. Um, so you guys can go in and find, I mean, there's all kinds of storyboard templates that you guys can use. And it, you can scribble on them with a pencil. Take a picture and turn that in. I am not picky. Storyboards don't have to be perfect. It's just you sketching out how you would like for your project to go. That's it. A storyboard is just a picture, a graphical image of what you think this could look like when you're done. That's all it is. So it doesn't have to be perfect. So scribble it out on a piece of paper. Um, there are some available in PowerPoint if you like. If you go up and say file and new in PowerPoint and you search for storyboard, you will find there are some storyboard options in there for you and you can click one of those and create it um, and put your own images in there if you already know what it's gonna look like. Or you could do screen clippings if you already know what it's gonna look like. Let's say that you're like super duper focused and, and you already know exactly what you're gonna do and you're kind of working on it. You could come here and say insert, screenshot, screen clipping. and put your images in there so that they are actually what they are. But you don't have to be that fancy. Like I said, you can scribble this out and I'm totally okay with it. Your storyboard for this module is only a goal of what you think your final project will look like for the next module. Just want you to get used to using storyboards. That's it. All right, good luck.